college, brother. You so smooth. <laughs> you, need, you, need, you need to teach an at this class, like a college coach or something. Like if you was my coach back when I was wrestling in high school, like man, I'd have needed that. You know, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, this energy is just so real and magnificent. Like, oh my god, feeling the spirit. This is better than church. <laughs> it's a version of it. It's a version of it. No, no I'm taking a shot at Chicago. No. <laughs> uh, we're going to keep it moving. Come in to this podium. Look at this. Okay, cool. I'm about to say, how we was on time? Over there, she over there looking like a shit night. <laughs> blood in, blood out. No. Um, <laughs> I was, I was going to say that for last, but I was like, no, I got to say that right now. <laughs> Sometimes you got elephants in the room and you like, forget it. Say it with your chest. Say it with your chest. <laughs> because I'm true in my power. So for everybody listening, understand your power when you are connected to business. Always be prepared for the unknown because we never know what's gonna happen. If you need resources, if you need to take a break, if you need help, through your business, through writing your book, through doing your tours, reach out before you slap the piss off somebody in the house. Do it before. I'm gonna come and bail you out, but do it before. So when we, the times came around, there are people I know that were mentally struggling with job skills issues. You know, somebody might have been an accountant somewhere. They were might have worked at a Walmart, but their job was shut down because of COVID. And I felt like for this event, this is promoting people to step up. Don't let what happened in the past keep you from going up the ladder more. Open your eyes, open your mind, be wondrous on what can you do? Because at that time, there are a lot of people that we all know started businesses out of the blue. They had nothing else to do. They were sitting at home. Um, we had people doing, um, who know how to use cricket machines, who know how to sew, who know how to do hair. These things came out the woodworks because they were sitting at home with nothing to do. Now there are some people who have those specialized skills that can come out of them also if they open their eyes and their heart and their mind on what can I do? What do I know how to do? It could better yourself and for your family. But it makes you a better person to know that within you know you're better than what you are or what people see you are. See you as. You regurgitate what you take in. It's just like you read what you sow. I'm seeing it in the business world. I came to Dallas addicted, broken, mentally, physically, just divorced. I came here with my two sons in my car and just what we could fit in our trunk. I went to, I keep saying here, I'm sorry y'all. I know we in bad rooms, but I'm always thinking that in my home, so excuse me for that. <laughs> but I went to Dallas with just that and nothing. Just a couple of dollars, you know? And even though I'm not where I want to be in certain regards, I'm looking at what I've been able to do on my own because Part of healing is having some sense of spirituality. Mm -hmm. If it ain't God, if you're an atheist, fine. You can still be a spiritual person. You can still be a right person. You don't. You don't have to to, to ascribe to any dogma. You just have to have some values and be comfortable and know who you are. Mm -hmm. And if it's meant for you to follow the path of God, you'll end up on it. Don't let people force you. Find your own way. That's part. I had to call those people that I needed and who 
always show me love. Because in that moment, I needed to pour on me the way that I've been pouring on them. I had to do that. I had to figure out how am I going to accept the new normal of my life? Because they told me I was going to get a real check. I'm just going to break it down with food pain. Because that's what I do with my food pain. And I'm all the way now. So a lot of people think it's a showpiece and a prop. And I really do this. Okay? But how was I going to elevate my life at the same time while trying to get into a healing continuum? So a lot of people talk about mental illness. They talk about getting over, overcoming obstacles. But what they never talk about is the fact that once you have been diagnosed with a mental illness, it becomes a healing continuum. A lot of people say, oh my God, I am healed. No. You enter what's called a healing continuum. You use those strategies, the information around you, the people, the resources that you have, right? You know, I always tell people that you can get over certain things. We talk about how certain things like depression, anxiety, and generational curses. My thing is this, how can I call it a curse if those people that were ancestors of mine did not have love, self-love, education, technology, and opportunities that I have today? How can I consider it a curse when they didn't know? So my thing is this, I can't pay you back, but I can pay you There are people in this world that really, really thinks in their heart that when they achieve happiness, that they achieved it all. Nothing could be further from the truth. There is a law that's called the law of diminishing marginal utility. Now, I'm going to tell you exactly what this means. Okay? No, I'm not being a psychiatrist. This is real. When you become as successful as Ebony the Ebonizer, she's going to be successful. And when you make this great money, and when you make this grandeur of like things such as a home, a house, a car, and everything, let, let's even talk about going out to a steak dinner. If you go get a steak dinner, what happens is you're going to be happy. But then what happens is you're going to go get that steak dinner the next day. You're going to be happy again. And then when you get that steak again the third day, then something changes. What happens is the gratification of how you are with terms of the elevation of the marginal activity won't be there anymore. Now you want something more. You want something more. You want something more. So when you hit that ways of becoming a, a, a successful person, well, success to me is another uh, entity. You can wake up by being successful. But when I'm talking about like making lots of money and having these things that you have, you don't feel happy anymore. And what happens is this identity of what you're trying to go through is not as what you think. Now you want more steak. And the service is great, but then you go to this other restaurant, the other service is not great because of the fact that you're still looking for that edge of more, more, more. And I'll give a little testimony. When I was young, I had an aunt. We didn't know what was going on. I remember I was around 13, 12, 13. We would wake up, she would wake us up at two and three in the morning and tell us she was hearing someone outside her window of her house. We would go outside with hammers and sticks looking for people. 12, 13, you just woke me up on my sleep. I don't know what we're doing. She was never diagnosed. It wasn't until I got older that I realized she, had, she was suffering. And of course, back then, many of the black and brown community, we don't like, like talking about mental illness. So we had to keep everything, keep it quiet. You know, you didn't talk about that. You, you didn't say, oh, Auntie Shirley was crazy. Auntie somebody had something. You didn't say that. So we just had to live with it and deal with it. Again, it wasn't until I was older that I realized she was suffering. And if she would have been diagnosed back then, we may have been able to save her. You know, things could have been so much differently. I feel like we all go through something at some point in time, anxiety, depression. I mean, I went through it. I was dealing with, a, a, I had a son who was deceased now, but he had a disability. I was taking care of a disabled husband. I was going through a lot. I didn't know it at the time that I was actually going through a depression. I was still managing my firm, but I kept fighting. I kept going day by day. I didn't let it show. I didn't show that sign of weakness. I just kept going. But I found myself going home at night and just being in that dark place. 
And then again, I realized I was actually going through something. So it's so important to share your story because your story is going to be what's safe. You know what that means? You are not a mistake. You was purposed to be here. God makes no mistakes. He said, you know, the thoughts and things that he thinks towards you. Whoever's watching this, or if you're here right now, just know that you are somebody. Say that I am somebody. I am somebody. somebody. Say I will do great things. I will do great things. Because I have purpose. Because I have purpose. I'm going to take it one step further. See, purpose is the key to unlock the door to your future. But it's going to take faith to push that door open. Faith without works is dead. I wouldn't be here if I didn't have faith. Trust me, I would not be here if I didn't have faith. But I know my purpose, and my purpose is to inspire and motivate. My purpose is to help other people find their purpose. So I want to let you know today that don't let nobody stop you tell you what you can't do, especially if they're not doing it. Don't you hear what people tell you what you can't do and they ain't doing nothing? Or what you doing on Facebook, scrolling, what you doing, gossiping? So never let nobody take your life and take your shot. Because you are bad all by yourself. Because I know I am. I'm bad all by myself. It's going to be all right. going to be all right. It's 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 gonna be